name is uh, Linda Olaka, um, a placement officer with Cyber Shuja. For those of us, for those of you we've not met, I know my colleague Kate. Uh, sorry, my colleague um, um, Hope Nduta has the one who's been hosting these sessions. Usually, work with her uh, for this session. So, um, let me welcome you today. Um, this uh, evening. We are privileged to have uh, Javan uh, Kagasi. Um, so please allow me to introduce him so that he can he can he can kick off our session. Hello, Javan. How are you? Hello, Linda. Uh, Hello. Glad to how be are here. you today? I'm well. Very well. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay, good. I know we've been speaking and uh, just uh, thank you very much for agreeing to be our guest speaker this evening. So um, let me introduce uh, Javan. Um, so Javan uh, Kagasi is um, an IT um, risk manager, uh, cybersecurity with Bank of Africa, Kenya. Um, so he's he's basic. He said he is an information scientist. So he's basically passionate about IT, and his particular passion is in the area of cybersecurity. He 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 thrives in creating a safer space in the world of internet and pen testing and script and and is also a script writer. So um, thank you very much, Javan. Um, I hand over to you. Uh, please go ahead and and take it away. Uh, thank you very much, Linda. Uh, good evening, everyone. I uh, hope I'm audible. And uh, let me just uh, share my my screen, my my camera on. Turn it on. At least you can see me. Uh, am I <clears throat> am I visible or I'm still black? <laughs> you're visible. You're not black like me. You're visible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, much appreciated. <clears throat> Um, so I'll be sharing a little, bo a little bit about myself and uh, I'll be sharing my screen. Let me just share my screen first. Hope it's visible. Yes, it is. All right, all right. So I'll kick start and, uh, on, our, on our session for this evening. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, for me, uh, my name is Javan Kagasi. I'm an IT risk officer. Um, I began, uh, I'm a proud first cohort graduate of Cyber Shuja, and Cyber Shuja has led me up to, to be up to here. And uh, I'm much Great. grateful for the team, uh, much grateful for everyone who has been there to in support. I know they've been gu gu guiding each and every one of us through knowing where, where we are in terms of job placements and uh, the, the rest. But uh, I know that everything is going to be, everything has been great. And I give all thanks to Cyber Shuja, Sirian, and uh, Kenya Bankers Association for, for, the, for, for everything that they've done for me. Now, I'll kick off the session. <laughs> I do. Now, uh, for me, uh, this is what I'm going to take you through. Uh, the content is introduction to what is risk, what I normally focus on, areas of risk assessment, uh, mostly in cybersecurity, in IT, and uh, other, other sections where I'm supposed to be doing uh, risk assessments, methods, procedures, and documentation of all risks that, uh, that are pertain to any, uh, everything that we do, and uh, the, a brief summary of, wh of what I normally handle at Bank of Africa, Kenya. Now, what is risk? Uh, risk basically is just uh, inv uh, what involves uncertainty about effects or implica implications of an activity with respect to something that human human humans value, often focusing on the negative or on the or on the undesirable co consequences. So, for me, uh, what I do at Bank of Africa is normally in terms of IT risk, whereby I do checks on servers. I do checks on on each and every each and every devices that are there. I work with the with the IT team because I, I'm a, I'm an enterprise risk person. So I work with the IT team in terms of liaising with them in on ensuring that we have a safe, a safe space for for the bank to do their the business, and also uh, we ensure business continuity in, in the case that uh, if something fails, uh, we have a backup procedure whereby 
whatever fails, we'll have a, we'll have a, a plan B. Uh, we should we should never rely on a plan A, much less uh, that uh, that you should have you should be having a plan B. So most of the most of the times, I normally do risk in terms of uh, the human the human factor. I also check on I also check on the systems. I check on glitches. I check on ev on every application that that, that is there. And uh, in height in 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 further to, to elaborate, I normally check on pe people people's uh, perspective on what what we do, and 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 also in terms of trainings. Let's say if I want to uh, educate people uh, or the or the staff that I work I work with, I normally present present them with the training sessions whereby they can understand what a cybersecurity person does and what are what are the basic methods of uh, be, being secure. I'll move on to the next slide. Now the areas of risk assessment. Uh, basically, I normally I normally focus on new projects. Let's say like uh, if there's something new that is being brought in, in, in into into our into our organization or into an organization. What I normally check uh, is on on new projects, uh, new onboarded servers. Let's say if you want to implement a new system, it needs to be to be provided with with its own server. Whereby we need to we need to do tests on it. Uh, do a do a, do a basic uh, pre-test before before bringing it live uh, live to be used by by the by the team and also by by clients outside. Other things that we, that we normally do is system users. The, on system users, uh, this one mis basically focuses on the people who use the various systems and the various projects that we that we uh, create. Let's say, for instance, if we have a if we uh, are to onboard a new pro a new project or a new a new system, we uh, we, gi we give uh, assign assign we assign it to people, uh, the staff that that are required to to be using it. So in terms of that, we normally assess what what the people are going to be using and what people uh, and what uh, areas and what pri privileges they have. Let's say if someone has a super privileges uh, super privileges, uh, that one will remain normally with the IT team. Pardon, it says, oh, so someone has his microphone on, but it's well. So what, what I normally do on system systems, I check uh, what, what the system is. I check, look at the requirements. I also check on, on the people who are going to be using them in terms of uh, ensuring that uh, the system will not be used for any other purposes apart from the business case that is set for. On remote access, I normally do do this on a daily basis. Let's say, if, uh, for instance, someone has gone home and uh, they they need to access uh, to do their work from home. I normally do, do do a review on this in terms of ensuring that there there is no uh, risk that is uh, that is presented by it. And if there is any unauthorized access to that, th then I do I do a further investigation, and basically. Uh, and then basically report it to, to my to my authorities who who is the head of head of enterprise risk now for me in terms of uh, remote remote access this one i normally focus on peop on the people who are given access to to work from home so if you don't have that access for to, from for working from home uh, that one, that one you'll need to li to liaise with the enterprise risk because we normally base on any, everything that is risk and also vulnerability assessment and penetration testing. These ones we we normally do on, on a quarterly basis uh, uh, for us. But uh, in in terms of uh, where, where we need a better understanding, we reach out to other 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 providers like Serian, whom we are grateful for uh, because they are, they provide a, a, an in depth uh, in depth finding. Now risk assessment pro uh, entails uh, has processes and. Uh, uh, if you can see clearly on the screen, we have eight processes, which of which the first one is identifying the assets. Like for instance, if we if we are onboarding a new project, we identify the asset and then we do we do a risk assessment. Uh, what I'd like to give a small hint on this is that uh, we need uh, uh, for a cybersecurity person, if you are onboarded as an enterprise uh, of, as an IT risk person, you need to make Google. Or Google Docs, your your best friend, because that that is where you normally do your research. Because uh, this uh, most of the systems that that are out there have have been used by other people, and then you can use you can Google it and then find information in terms of how they they, they cut across. Identifying the uh, so the risk assessment process entails identifying the assets, 
de determining the, uh, its criticality, uh, critical levels of the asset, identifying the threats to each critical asset. Number four, identifying ex the existing co countermeasures uh, in brackets, uh, existing security is still existing countermeasures. Uh, all all ex existing securities are, are countermeasures that we need we normally uh, enforce. On the fifth one, determining the vulnerability level of each critical asset, determining the, the risk level of each critical asset, uh, asset, and also recommend security upgrades to reduce the high levels of risk and perform. And the last one is perform cost, uh, cost benefit analysis and support for the upgrade of, of if recommendations are given, if possible. Now, most, mostly, I like to focus on, on identifying the threats. Now, uh, I, I'm sure most of us were taken through uh, doing uh, doing NMAP. Uh, most of us are proficient in NMAP and are doing vulnerability assessments. So if, if we are to use something like NMAP, uh, once we have a we have a test environment for for a certain for a certain for a certain server or a certain system, we normally we normally uh, attempt attempts to do to do uh, an NMAP scan on it. Once we do an NMAP scan, we under, we get to understand. Uh, what, what which uh, port, ports are, are going to be used? Which ports we need to close? Which ports need, need to be filtered? And which ports need, need to be to be to be closed? So in terms of that, uh, we we identify the the open ports that, that are needed, and then we also do a, a further analysis in terms of uh, ensuring that what what go, what goes through through those ports uh, is secured and it's and it, and it's filtered. Now what uh, we have a we have a system that uh, ensures that uh, whatever whatever. Go, through it goes through the systems that you have they they are protected and in terms of uh, ensuring that no no one has uh, embedded something in, in in a document or maybe as a sent a, a packet a packet that uh, that contains a malware so in hindsight this uh, this one identifies the threat we also determine the criticality of uh, of each and every threat let's say if uh, we have uh, we have the low medium high and critical so if something has a has a has a critical a critical uh, rating, we just uh, we indicate that on on our documentation, and then we we shall we shall give a, feed, a feedback on how to resolve it. And if we do if we don't find a solution for that, we will we will we, lie with the with the vendors who who are providing for us the services. On the fourth one, identifying existing countermeasures. Uh, we normally do uh, this is where we normally uh, implement uh, you, you, the use of the use of Google in terms of uh, knowing the, the countermeasures that were that are that were set, and also countermeasures that, that we need also need to to, to get to. So uh, on that, uh, it's uh, normally by use of Google, you understand the understand the layout and the environment and the measures that were that were implemented by, by the vendors, and also you can also add your own own implementations for the existing countermeasures. Number five is determining the the vulnerability levels. Now this one is somehow similar to identifying the threats, but uh, for, for vulnerability levels, uh, this this one you give an in-depth analysis of what what you found, and uh, you, when you document, you you be detailed as possible so that at least uh, the people who you are going to present to also understand because they are not uh, IT IT savvy like, like us. We all, we we need to pr provide for them the the, the needed uh, information. In, in in the basic let's say like uh, I don't want to put them in in a in a bad way but uh, explaining it like a uh, to like you are explaining it to a ten year old or a six year old uh, if I'm not wrong so if you present it uh, like that they'll be able to understand and then they'll be able to get the the, the resources that, and the solution that they need to implement on the sixth one uh, determining the risk level this one is almost the, it's also the same. Uh, determine uh, that risk level, high, low, or medium. Once you have done the vulnerability levels, identifying the threats, uh, uh, determining the criticality, and identifying the asset, you you gauge uh, the risk in terms of high, low, or medium. So if the if the risk that 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 attains to to a certain system or a, or a certain server is low, then you, you, you can pro, you can give you can give the go ahead to pro, to proceed to to, to the to the uh, test. To, to the to the live to the live section sorry so if it has a me, a media a medium score it you lose, you also have to to do to do a better check on that and that so that at least you can provide a solution 
to, to that so that you can mitigate it and then in, for ensure that the, the risk that, that is uh, availed will be able to be mitigated and have a residual risk risk of, or may, of maybe low or even a risk of three or two. If it's high, you'll need to do a bit, you'll need to do a bit, a better determinate, a better check in terms of uh, re rely, relying on what, what you what you were able to get. And then uh, uh, from, from there, you can be able to gauge on how on how you can you can reduce that risk to maybe become medium of where you, you'll be able to, uh, to gauge yourself if you can accept the risk or maybe you can just forgo, forgo the risk until a, a better solution is, uh, has been provided. In terms of our criticality, now that's where that's where we, we bring in brains in terms of understanding the vulnerability that is there and then documenting it in terms of informing the the heads and the and the board that you need to check on check on this vulnerability that is there and then we need and then we need to step back a bit do a further analysis so that you can find a solution to that so that we can limit that that risk to be residual or low on the recommendations, we, know, we normally give the recommendation to, to, to the board of managers, uh, to, the, to the board of the bank, and then uh, from there we perform a cost-based analysis, uh, cost-benefit analysis, whereby we uh, we understand the, the cost that we need, and then we also put, put a price tag on, on it in terms of uh, knowing that uh, this risk we can we can mitigate. This is what uh, this is what we have, and this is what we are going to to, to appreciate or on. I'll move into the to the next slide. Now, methods of risk assessment. Uh, basically, uh, this is what this is what I normally I normally go through uh, is identifying a risk. If we have a, a risk whereby something is a, a, it can can be hacked, we identify that risk. We we go to the risk estimation. We do a risk evaluation on it. We do we do a risk a risk treatment that is in terms of uh, uh, regulating that risk in in terms of uh, making sure that we can accept it or not. If we can accept it, then we give it a, a green tick. If not, we we just uh, return it back and then we begin a, a, a new session, which goes over and over. So the risk assessment methods rely uh, is basically risk identification, risk estimation, risk risk evaluation, risk treatment, and risk acceptance. So once you reach risk acceptance, that one will be will, will be able to will be able to say that if if anything happens, we, we, we are we are we are solely liable on this and that and, and that we had agreed on on this particular kind of risk. On the next one, uh, procedures to follow. Now for procedures, this is how this is where you need you need to fo to focus on in terms of uh, doing a risk assessment. Let's say if uh, we, we are to check out a system, and uh, we, we we normally have uh, a lot of stuff in a, in an organization like ours, uh, like Bank of Africa, we have uh, very tough. We normally access very very many systems that we that we have uh, brought in over the years, and because of that. We need to be uh, ensuring that there, there are no loopholes that are left. So, as an IT risk officer, what I normally do on, on this is, uh, is is the following: in terms of uh, understanding the users who are active, uh, the users who are active staff on the organization. So, this one will will re, will solely rely on the the provision of HR, the human resource team, whereby they provide you a list of all the current staff that they have uh, as as the, uh, in the organization. And from there, you'll be able to, to to understand that these are the kind of people who are there, and the, and the, and that list will solely need to have users, uh, the staff name, the department, and when they were onboarded. So, like let's say, like for instance, if you are onboarded in in January, that one will mean that you you'll ha you'll have access, uh, you ha you have been having access for the for the past nine months, and through that nine months, you'll be able to understand that uh, through uh, through that nine months. You'll be able to to gauge on on the system that you've been having, so that at least uh, when auditors come, you'll be on the safe zone in terms of a, a, a giving a clarity whereby someone has had this system for this particular amount of time, and then uh, even uh, even if someone decides to leave before that time ends, they will be able to tra trace back where, where, where it is. Uh, which brings me to the next one for ex staff who have left the organization. Now let's let's say for instance if uh, we have someone. Uh, has been working for 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 the or has been working in a, in an organization for the past uh, 
four or five years, it will it will mean that that, that person uh, will will decide to to exit to exit the organization. So for this one, uh, there are normally uh, procedures that people need to follow in terms of li li leaving 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 the organization. So the the the, the their mandates are, are being are being given. They begin for, from the from the, the things that that they were provided for. They they bring they bring them back, and from there they they start doing clearing in all departments. So like if we have uh, 20, if we have twenty or thirty departments, you need to go through each and every one of them to be cleared manually and also to be cleared from the from the systems it, itself. So each and every department has its system, of which uh, if someone was using them. They they need to to be to be removed from the system, and uh, and at least uh, and then from there we'll be able to, to to know that this person was was removed from this system at this particular date, so that at least we can, we can be able to to do a, a clean up in terms of uh, the people who normally access it. Now another 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 challenge wh wh which uh, we normally do in terms of procedures procedures to follow, uh, in terms of he, the hu the human factor is the interdepartmental change. Let's say if uh, someone decides to ch change a uh, change a uh, uh, career, uh, to change their their knowledge. Let's say if uh, someone like me, I'm in IT risk. I decide to go to to a department. Let's say like a uh, HR, of which uh, <laughs> I'm very quite sure I, I won't be able to manage in terms of HR because my knowledge is uh, so solely based on IT. So if I was to change a department. There'll be in, there'll be a requisition form where whereby I'll have to fill in that I've shifted departments from from uh, from risk to human resource. So if I move if I do the cha the the change, that will mean that the systems that I used to have in uh, as an IT risk will now have will now need to be stripped off and then to be pro to be enabled to be enabled to to work as an as a human resource person. So the the, ch the changes uh, in between will enable us to understand that Hello. this person, yes. Okay, yeah. Uh, what's up? Hello. Uh, uh, someone have a question? Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll proceed. Let's kindly mute ourselves. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, I'll proceed. Thank you, Linda. Uh, uh, so. In terms of uh, inter 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 interdepartmental changes, as I as I was saying, uh, once someone has, has left a certain department, they they need to go to the new department so that their previous the previous roles and system that they had are revoked are revoked, and then they are, they are onboarded with the with the new systems, and the new systems will be able to handle or what they are what they are going to do on that system. Now, on the mandate, on the fourth one, which is mandate removal, as officially communicated, in everything that that we normally do, we need to ensure that there is a communication that has been made. So, in terms of uh, if someone has left, uh, there is a communication that is that is supposed to be given. If someone uh, if someone has changed departments, <clears throat> there is there is a communication that is that is also provided there. So, in terms of uh, the system that people uh, used to have as an IT risk officer, I need I, I need to verify that this person has been deleted from that system, and the, and the, and I need to provide the proof. One of the things that I normally say is uh, is that uh, an IT risk officer is like an internal auditor, only that uh, you are doing uh, in terms of IT. So, if you, you are if you are an IT risk officer. You need to be to act to have a, a, an act like like an auditor, but only that uh, you are the auditor for internal. You are not uh, assessing people, but you are only uh, assessing the systems and the people who are in charge of those systems to remo to revoke the mandates of someone or to add the revo uh, the mandates of someone. So upon co communication uh, communication for removal or uh, tra transfers, uh, we, we normally check we normally check that one. The person will be will be okay to continue with their with their work, and the various staff various staff systems various systems the staff used to access. So normally here, what, what we normally check is uh, the systems that they, that uh, that they need the, that they need, and then, and the system that they do not require. So if someone uh, if someone is uh, for IT, they need to have this this kind of systems, and if someone is for enterprise risk, they need to have this kind of systems. So in hindsight, if uh, if if all the systems are known, we need to document them and then ensure that these systems are, are accessed by 
in a certain department so that there's no overlap in terms of uh, the people who need to be accessing certain systems. So from there, it will be it will enable us to, to be on, on clarity in terms of uh, the systems that people need to be accessing and also those which are not supposed to be accessed by people. I'll move on to the next slide. Uh, I think I am, I am almost finished. I thought it, was, it will take a long time. So in summary, uh, risk Is it me or he's frozen? He's frozen. Oh, okay. Let's give him a few. Um, okay. Uh, go through to backtrace what, what happened and uh, give a detailed information on that. So in terms of risk, uh, uh, it entails mostly what is up. Happened. Uh, also, and then to ensure that is and here to conditions of the organization and also No, ensure that Uh, go for three years and is able to access, then they'll be able to compromise. system because there are, there are no uh, change, uh, cleanups that are done. So if someone had access to a certain system and Hello. Yes, I've, the, I've just dropped. Uh, Yes, Cyrus. Yes, I've just informed him about his connectivity. Um, let's wait when he comes back. Hello, Linda. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, uh, let me see. Oh, five minutes. Ah. Um, let me. Let me see if I can mute myself because I'm hearing an echo coming from this side.
Guys, just give us a few minutes. He's trying to sort himself out. Just be, be a bit patient. Hello everyone. Uh, apologies. Uh, I was told that uh, I, I had lost communication. Uh, can you still see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay. Um, I had reached. Uh, where did I leave? Uh, leave out. I think I, I was already finished with the with the presentation. Uh, maybe if uh, you can tell me where I, where I stopped, where where my network uh, had a problem. I think when when you actually starting to present on this slide, when you mentioned that uh, oh you've actually come to the close tail end, so when you started speaking here, that's when you started losing you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. So if uh, if if I can continue, uh, that's okay. Please go ahead. Yeah, so. Yeah, okay, thank you very much, Linda. Uh, apologies, everyone, for that uh, technical hiccup. Uh, we may we may be able to co control what we do, but uh, when, techn when technology fails, you need to do a reboot. And uh, so, uh, as I was saying, uh, this is the summary. Uh, risk entail what is uh, positive happening. And uh, these reviews are normally done to ensure that systems are not compromised and adhere to compliance and regulations of organizations. And uh, like I had said earlier, um, if uh, there, there's a need, if there's a need for for any organization, they need to align themselves with the. the for instance, for us, since we are a, we are a bank entity, a finance entity, we need to align ourselves with the CBK regulations of which uh, we, we are strictly adhere to in terms of uh, ensuring that all systems that we have, they normally they normally have uh, records of it. And also we, we do check uh, further checks on logs uh, to ensure that uh, whatever tra uh, traverses uh, through our systems is something that is needed by by by, every, uh, by the by the organization. And also it is in line with what CBK uh, re requests us to do. So in short, uh, that's my presentation. Uh, if we have uh, so, any, something to present to ask, uh, I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up for the question and answer session. Hope my screen is still visible. Yes, it is. Yes. Gosh, thank, so thank I, you so much. Thank you very much, Javan, for a comprehensive uh, presentation. Um, yeah, yeah, so at this juncture, as you said, we, we, we can uh, um, open it the floor to questions. Yeah? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes. sure. Okay. So thanks, thanks, uh, good people. You've been a, a great audience. So at this point, I would, would just want to welcome um, any questions, comments, um to javan yeah the floor is open okay i'm seeing grace thank you grace please go ahead good afternoon good afternoon uh, i'm sorry i've just i've just joined late maybe uh, you elaborate about the risk assessment process let me see uh this this slide yes yeah so on the risk assessment process uh, uh let me just uh, clarify better uh we identify the asset so this section the first section where for identifying the asset this is whereby we reach out to we <coughs> we reach out to vendors apologies we reach out to vendors or we reach out to service providers let's say like uh, for, we reach out to someone like safaricom or re, or reach out to someone like uh, cbk where they provide for us a, a new system 
and on the second on the second section whereby it uh, determines the critical critical level of an of an asset this is where uh, where I, I normally uh, say we need if you need to do a determination you need to do you need to all systems uh, have, have passed through other people and also those people are also did their due diligence in terms of research so that you need to understand to use when in terms of criticality you need to ensure that you get the basis of uh, The oh, we're losing him again. Element. Is Is it my network or he's breaking? He's breaking. He, he's breaking. I'm just trying to reach him. OK. Um, how about now? Can you hear? Okay. Yes. Uh, apologies for that. Uh, I think uh, the demigods are not on my side today. But uh, I hope uh, uh, you've gotten me up to the third uh, to the third part. If that's okay. Yes. Uh, Grace. Oh yeah. Yes. So on the on identifying threats, uh, here is where I normally do my do my checks using uh, using uh, Kali Linux or Parrot. Uh, if some people prefer Parrot, I prefer Kali Linux. So in terms of this, I normally use uh, I normally use uh, three uh, tools like a, like a vulnerability assessment tools. We have Nessus, we have Nexpos, we have uh, an Nmap as well. But for Nmap, Nmap normally is uh, once you have, once a system has been given a, a once a system has been an IP. So from there, once the server has been given an IP, we, it's where we do uh, identify, uh, identifying threats. In the identifying existing countermeasures, this is where we uh, we still do Google docking from, from here, and then from there uh, we are able we're able to understand what, what, what is required from there. Uh, determining the vulnerability level uh, here, we normally uh, we normally grade them in terms of rank of low, medium, high, and critical. So if we have a, a low a, a low a low uh, risk or a low, low vulnerability level, that one we we can, we can onboard on it because we know that we can mitigate it. If we have a medium one, we need to do a, ch a check on it, but not that in depth. If we have a high. We need to we need to uh, to trace uh, back trace on ourselves to find the solution for it and then and then give a feedback on it. If we have a critical one, we need to hold everything to attend to that to to that uh, particular vulnerability level. On the sixth part, which is determining the the risk level of each critical asset. So if we have a a, a single asset or a, or numerous assets, we need to verify. At the risk level that it will pose to us as, a, as an organization or as a, as a or as an entity. So in terms of this one, it will uh, the, the risk level is still the same. We can we can grade it to to uh, after we've done the the risk assessment, we need to verify if it's a high risk or a low risk or a medium risk. So if it's a high, 
uh, we'll need to do a backtrace again to ask the vendors or the service providers to do a, to do a checkup on it and then give us a feedback once it's done then we'll go but we'll backtrace again to the test environment where the, where then we can we can re restart the, the whole process again in terms of the recommendation this is where we need we normally do the the documentation whereby we uh, al align ourselves with, with with what we have found and then we present it to, 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 the, to the stakeholders whereby they'll be able to understand what, what, we, what we're dealing with. And on performance cost, cost benefit analysis, this is where we, we, we need to, uh, to align ourselves with, 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 uh, with the recommendation that is, that is there. We need to uh, put ourselves in, 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 in terms of understanding the finances that, that we may incur in case of a risk that it may, if it may occur, and so on and so forth. Uh, Grace, is that uh, okay? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, apologies again for having that technicality. Uh, I am hoping that in the future I won't be having such challenges. <laughs> Over to you, um, Linda. Yes, I think the next time I saw was George after Grace. George, is that, am I correct, George? Yes. Yes, please go ahead. So my question is, uh, the first one is, what tools uh, do you use to identify your risks? And then the uh, other the, question is, what certificates, what certifications did you, did you have to secure for your current role? Um, okay, for the first one, you want to identify to to check on the on the first section the identifying the risk assets or <coughs> George no, you can elaborate no, identifying risks hmm? that is the second the second oh, slide after yeah. after this slide oh okay uh, let me just bring it no I'm Isa Jake, I leave a meeting right one minute well, this please one. let's let's mute I'm our um, our mics please let's mute Thank you. Uh, George, if you can hear me, um, this, this is the slide. The slide which just processes its process or what? I think uh, it's the previous um, slide. I think this it's the one. previous slide or yes, this one. The methods, the method. The method. Or the procedures to follow. Oh, okay. Not procedure, the slide on methods. Oh, this one. So your question was uh, the tools that I normally use to do the risk identification. Risk identification, yes. Yeah, so I normally use uh, open source tools and also there are proprietary tools, uh, which uh, if I had if I had the chance to sh to share, I'll also share. But I normally what I normally use is a uh, Nmap. Uh, we have Nessus, we have Nexpos, uh, but uh, for me, I, I I have the the expert version. So for the expert version, uh, it normally do documents for you, and then you can present it to to, to the board to the uh, stakeholders whereby they can also under, understand what, what has been found and then after that we do the we do the the checks again whereby we liaise with the IT team in terms of uh, ensuring that the, the risks that that were identified are not there or maybe they can be low or neutral uh, if it if it's neutral then that's okay we can do the go ahead if it's uh, low we can still proceed but if it's uh, medium we need to be to, to be uh, doing a close monitoring on it now on the second question uh, on the certification that I, that I did um actually i think that that one is a bit simple because uh, the certification that, that that got me to where i am uh, it's uh, what you are currently having uh, currently studying for uh, you have uh, you all are our cyber studio students Secu the security mm -hmm. analyst uh, program has been able to provide for us and also even even after you you have you are through with the cyber studio program and the mentor mentorship you need to do an extra mile in terms of ensuring that your knowledge sticks sticks with you because uh, as we say in IT uh, knowledge never stops 
uh, because risk uh, evolves every day, every every time, and risk is a threat. And if we have a threat, we need to understand how this threat works. So what what they normally do uh, on a daily basis is uh, to to learn and unlearn. If I if I if I do, get get uh, information from from let's say like uh, the hack, the hacker news, I get my my information from various sources. So if I if I can understand uh, that 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 uh, that method then you you can be able to understand that this the, 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 there is this risk that we need to understand to re regulate and also to ensure that we are not affected by it let's say like for instance uh, that time when we had the uh, anonymous sudan uh, attacking uh, the kenyan services the kenyan system services uh, when it was down we need we had to a, a retrace in terms of uh, the system that, that they that they hit let's say like for the they, they heated the uh, which systems and the government platform the the e citizen one whereby is a pe pe the services were uh, just uh, bombarded with the D dos attacks uh, which uh, made, made the system to to have a, a problem in terms of uh, working on on the actual people who needed the services so in terms of that we needed to under, to find out uh, w w where the, where those uh, attacks were coming from where those the DDoS attacks are coming from, and uh, we identified the IPs from them. We did uh, our investigation and then informed uh, other people because uh, this this is something that we did jointly in terms of uh, regulating things. So if we find uh, we found the IPs, we communicated with other with other stakeholders, and then we we just told them to if you find an IP like this, kindly proceed to block to block this IP from from your systems, and. Uh, uh, the certification that that I that I have, I have CTI. You can look into my into my LinkedIn profile. I normally update it uh, on on a regular. You can check. You can just uh, look for me, Javan Kagasi. Uh, you you you'll find me there. Uh, at least uh, from there, you can see the cert the certification that I've been doing, and also doing uh, doing C CTFs are, are also a big a big boost because they in ensure that your knowledge grows and grows. Uh, George, uh, have I answered your question correctly? It's okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Then next online we have Teddy. Teddy, please go ahead. Yes, good evening, all of you. Good evening, good evening. I don't exactly have a question. Um, I only have wanted to appreciate you to say thank you for your presentation because um, in as much as we have uh, had the, the slight, <laughs> slight, the slight problem, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. You still were able to go on and you have delivered. So thank you. Thank you so much, Teddy. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Then next online we have D. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I have two questions. Yes. Concerning the tools to for risk identification, can we can we say that Burpsuit and Wireshark can be yes. tools of risk identification? Yes. Actually, for 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 Burpsuit and the Wireshark, uh, mm -hmm. for Wireshark it, it will it, it will help in terms of uh, uh, getting the the packets that that uh, normally tra traverse. And also, if you use a buff suit, let's say like if it's a system that, that, that has been provided, you can test that system through through there uh, with, with the correct approvals because uh, we cannot do things without approval. If you do that, you'll be going against the compliance of the of the of the of an organization. So yes, okay. uh, for buff suit, it's okay. You can use uh, you can use every tool at your disposal. Okay. Okay. The next question is, uh, mm -hmm. if at all someone wants to get an internship with Cyber How can one go about this? Uh, for Cyber um, I think uh, the best person to answer is uh, Linda. Uh, Linda. Uh, but uh, for, for me, for me, uh, I, I, I got a bit, I was enrolled as a first person uh, in the in the first cohort. So maybe the best person to reach out to for more details is Linda. Linda and uh, uh, the team th that is behind her. Okay, okay. Thank yes. You. You're welcome. Uh, Linda. Yes, I'll um, go ahead. 
you you have yeah. you have someone some someone to reach out to <laughs> yeah so just to yeah. answer that first let me request that those of us who are not speaking to kindly mute ourselves so that are not disruptive to the rest of the group um so um d to answer your question um what we are doing and i've been calling uh, most of us and i'll take advantage of this um, session to just say that now we are actually posting all all job um, applications on uh, the cyber shuja website so if you could kindly just go on the website and uh, fill in and have your profile there and please make sure it's complete um, so that once it's complete, then you'll be able to see all the job postings that we, 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 all the opportunities that we have. So that will include internal, because you asked specifically to say, but just so if we have any internal um, recruit um, uh, re requests or external, we all post them there, and then you can be able to apply and just go through the due process. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. Okay. And okay. before, 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 before I finish, I also have another last question. Well, mm -hmm. if you're doing a certification in penetration testing, and you're just an entry level in cybersecurity, when applying for internships or entry level jobs, what what field do you include? Do I say I am applying as a penet junior penetration tester? or cybersecurity expert or security consultant? How do I go about that? Um, just use the broader one so that you don't limit yourself. So, so just, I, I, I'd suggest a cybersecurity expert. I, I mean, I'm open to being corrected, but that's what I would go with. Um, and then also, I mean, that is, of course, if you, that, I'm, I'm assuming that is you're doing an open application to an organization, because yeah. for most organizations, they already have a specific role that they want to recruit for. Yeah. So okay. unless you're sending an open, if you're sending an open application, then mm -hmm. you can just send as a cybersecurity expert, but most roles they like they have sp specific um, roles that they want to recruit for. So that those it will be pen tested. So they, it's it's very specific in terms of the roles that they are recruiting for. Yeah, it's all right. Thank you, Marvin. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you, Linda. Um, Thank you, Javan, for the presentation. Good evening, everybody. Um, Good evening. My question is to Javan. Uh, I just wanted to ask, how would somebody go about attaining a certification in risk uh, risk management? And uh, also, what are the skills to focus on when it comes to uh, assessing risk? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Um, in in uh, you had asked uh, certifications for becoming a good uh, risk uh, risk manager. If I go to yes, correct, yes, yeah, uh, there there are a lot of certifications that are there. Uh, actually, I I know most of them are quite expensive for us because uh, some of us are just uh, new, new new to the new to the field and uh, we don't have that uh, that capital to to boost us but uh, if you are able to uh, to get uh, uh, platforms whereby you can you can access uh, you can access uh, free free uh, free courses uh, i'd recommend that you that you access uh, some of them let's say like uh, for me i had uh, tried i uh, wanted to have a certification in in CISSP certified information system security professional of which I wasn't able to get 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 the, the those uh, wanted requirements, but I was able to do them on on in simple in simple places. Let's say like uh, there's a platform called Simply Learn, where I was able to at least uh, go, have the basic the basic understanding of uh, what a CISSP professional does. So in terms of that, uh, you you need to have a certification in C, uh, as a CISA. Uh, you can you can be a CISA, which is Certified Information Security Auditor. You can have a certification in in CISIM, Certified Information Security Manager, and uh, and so on and so forth. But uh, mostly, you can focus on the CISIM, of which uh, you can use the platform like I've said, uh, Simply Learn, where where it will enable you to understand the the basic level of that. And there are many platforms. Before you can get the finance the financial support, you can just uh, be using the the free the free ones. And also, if you want to even delve better. 
you can try you can use uh, platforms like try hack me and uh, hack the box they normally have uh, uh, they cover a wide range of uh, information and they also cover uh, uh, various uh, places where, whereby you can train yourself practically uh, you having the hands on because it's not uh, great to say that uh, you are an you are a cybersecurity person and yet uh, your hands on are not that strong so you need to have the hands on in terms of uh, the caesar and the cis uh, and the cis the CSS. If you are able to, if you are able to finance yourself, then you can go ahead and, and do it. Uh, you had uh, another question. I think uh, maybe you can remind me. Uh, sorry, uh, my other question was: uh, What skills uh, would you think mm -hmm. to be valuable when it comes to risk mm -hmm. management? Uh, to risk management, uh, all, all there, there are no limitations to the skills that are, that are really required. What you, what 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 you need? Uh, let's say like for me, I'm an IT risk personnel, so I have the skills of uh, of performing vulnerability assessments. So with that vulnerability assessments, that one brings in the the section of uh, of all this uh, the section that I'm showing for the methods of risk assessment. If you have uh, the skills of uh, which we are provided by Cyber Shuja, you're able to uh, to grasp everything that is here because uh, you are can uh, you can identify a risk and also uh, report. Uh, for for me, normally it's just uh, identifying a risk, reporting it. Uh, this this is somehow in similar to what we normally do in bug bounty, whereby you can you can see a, uh, you can find a vulnerability in a, in a system, you document it, you show you show show a proof of concept, and then after that you'll be able to to go go ahead and then give in terms of uh, in terms of uh, relaying the information. Now for bug bounty, that one uh, you get paid, but for us, uh, it's uh, put in, in your job description to, to perform it. So if you find a risk there, you just do document it and then uh, give it to, to the respective stakeholders, whereby they'll be able to act on it. And even you can you can also provide a solution to, to, to them so that at least they can fast track on that and then you can you can close the, the, the issue that uh, you found. But for the skills that you need, uh, the skills are, are numerous. If you have a uh, vulnerability assessment skills, uh, th th that is a plus. If you have uh, an extra skills in terms of uh, identifying risks, then that's okay. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks. Um, thanks, um, Java. Next, we have John. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Java. Uh, uh, actually, uh, that that was a good presentation. I would really recommend for that. Uh, my question is, uh, mm -hmm. how frequently should we uh, review or reassess our system concerning uh, mm -hmm. risk treatment as a method of uh, risk assessment? Um, in terms of uh, reviewing risks, um, I, I wouldn't. Uh, I would recommend uh, you, 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 if it's possible, you can do, you can do it daily. But uh, I know that that one, that one will be a bit tedious. So what what we normally uh, what I normally do is uh, there are some systems which I normally do on a monthly, which are, are based on on their criticality. If we have a system that is uh, so critical, we need to uh, do evaluation of it monthly or uh, or even weekly if it's possible. So it, uh, in terms of risk, there is no limitation to to doing to performing a risk assessment. You just do it uh, on a, if you can do it on a daily, you can do it on a daily. If you can do it on a weekly, monthly, or quarterly, it will, it's okay. But I wouldn't recommend for you to do it uh, past past uh, quarterly because if we do it past quarterly, it will mean that uh, for the past uh, almost uh, four four plus months. Maybe a risk uh, that occurred uh, maybe in January would have uh, would have manifested in your systems by the time you you are going to do a, an assessment on that. So I'd recommend you do it weekly, uh, monthly, or even quarterly, but mostly weekly and monthly. Okay, thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Um, we have uh, Michael. Please go ahead. Are you able to hear me now? Yes, Michael, you are. We can hear you. Yeah, uh, I've heard you speak of certain certifications that needs uh -huh. to be done, but now you see, I, mm -hmm. I don't know if these particular certifications are recognized. Now, to 
do a certification like these online ones you know we have purple now mm -hmm. it's called uh, discount courses and there is mm -hmm. the come now assuming you've done certification from those particular sites mm -hmm. are they recognized anywhere because from what i know maybe there are those ones from easy cancel which are recognized mm -hmm. but uh, suppose an individual wants to go for those free ones and mm -hmm. then you try and apply for a position is that uh, acceptable or, or mm -hmm. are they just for your own personal uh, um okay uh, i've gotten your question so uh what, what i what i'd like to inform you is that uh, uh if, if there's no there's no uh, limit in terms of uh, where you get your info you, what, where you get your certification and when you, where you get your knowledge the question is not about certification the question is about uh, what, what you ha what you have in in, in terms of uh, knowledge if you have a certification from EC Council, of which that is the highest rec recommendation that uh, normally the HR normally check. If you have a if you have a cert certification like that, then that one will, will boost your 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 uh, your, your, your CV in terms of uh, get, get, getting the job and also determining the, your what we know what normally what what people normally check in terms of uh, the paycheck. But uh, if you have uh, any other certification, you can add it as, as, as an advantage because uh, that it will it will relay that you have a certain amount of content of knowledge that uh, you, you can be able to assist the the, the organization in terms of uh, in terms of uh, get, getting the, the knowledge that, that you need. So in in short, uh, what I what I recommend is if you can do uh, uh, paid certifications then that, that that's a plus. If you can do the free certifications, you can also uh, use those ones. Then uh, on your CV, you can just indicate them and then give give a brief uh, detailed information on that. I think uh, if it's possible, you can you can just uh, do do those certifications and ensure that the the uh, the ones that you that you are accurate on are the ones that are there uh, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, relaying to to the human resource team because uh. HR are the people who are employing you, and uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure if um, if I'm not wrong, 50% of them may, may not may not know what what normally happens in systems. So if you if you put your 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 if you put yourself in terms of uh, the certification that that you have, they will gauge you, and then they they also contact you because they know some some certifications. Uh, are too are too hard to 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 reach out. Let's say like uh, for certified ethical hacker. That one will require some some considerable amount of money, of which if you if you are able to do it, then you'll 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 also put in the, the the thought that you need to recover the money that you used to train yourself. So in short, if you are able to do any certification, do it and also gain the knowledge. Don't just do the certification ju just for sure. Do uh, do the do the certification, get the knowledge. Uh, that the certification is just uh, is just something to show that you have an, uh, experience in something. So if you have uh, the knowledge, then that's a plus for you. I don't know if I answered your question, Michael. Hello, uh, Michael. I heard you. Uh, I think. So. Okay, I have heard you. Yes. Yes. I. I. I okay. Are you able to? I have heard whatever you said. Mm -hmm. uh, use uh, what that, but my. Okay, so uh, the, the the last question is now uh, as an entry level cybersecurity personnel, mm -hmm. you see uh, this is one important question most interview. Uh, what's the pay grade now? Assuming like for the one uh, like when assessment, now assuming the expected pay grade for the job because you see um, some might find it irrelevant, but I think it's very important maybe to know the pay grade because you see when you try and do certain certifications you what you have in mind is uh, mm. the return because um, yeah. it's more or less like an uh, so you need to be assured of now if you do this now what is the uh, the end goal so what's the pay grade for such a position um I wouldn't uh, for 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 an for an entry position in cyber cyber uh, cyber security. 
um mostly uh, it, it it will depend on on how on your negotiation with with the, with the human resource team and the the interviewer the interviewee uh, everything that you communicate during that interview interview session it will solely determine on on the amount that 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 you'll be paid but uh, i wouldn't uh, want to delve much into that but uh, for an entry, entry level uh, you you can gauge uh, you can gauge it in terms in terms of uh, uh, no, normally what, what what I did for 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 my for myself I checked uh, in terms of uh, the, the the one the, the ones that uh, that that uh, preceded me let's say like uh, if someone uh, uh, had already begun working I asked them how much they, they are paid they are paid the, uh, the x amount of money then you can then you can just uh, grade yourself in terms of that so for the for the entry level uh, you can uh, rate yourself in between 50 to 100 there there about but uh, for not for for i'm not quite sure of uh, the changes uh, currently because uh, even as uh, the 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 currency is changing and the economy is uh, is shifting there need there are some things that are won't won't be able to factor in so it's uh, up to you to to be able to convince them that uh, this is the amount and then uh, they, they'll work on it but uh, for for the entry level uh, you can get you can gauge it uh, in between 50 to 60 but also you can do uh, you can do a research on that before you go to for the for the interview it's true and also it depends on the organization so it's very hard to yeah. put a put a figure because there are those yeah. some organizations that already have a, a like a grade band, so they say for this level we pay this much. Yeah, so mm. it really it's as this as Javan has said, it depends on a lot of things. It depends on the organization, it depends on the market, market, the way the market is behaving. Yeah, but just have an open mind and know that um, the most important thing is to is to get an in and uh, to do to do a, a, what what you're passionate about. And then after that, work towards uh, building your your career and making your returns better. Yeah. Any more takers? Any other? Any anyone else with a question, cons, um, comment? Well, if there's none, um, I just want to appreciate, appreciate Javan. Thank you so very much for a good uh, presentation, a detailed presentation. I, I, I believe that this has been a, a useful uh, session for, for most of us. Um, so now I'll just under, hand over to Javan for a, a final parting shot, and then, and then I can close the meeting. Um, okay, thank you, Linda. Um, thank you, everyone, for giving me this chance to present to you. Uh, I think uh, uh, the better the better tail end of the presentation. It seemed like uh, it was uh, giving uh, tips on how to get, uh, land on the best job, but uh, it's uh, it's a plus as well because uh, we, we, most of us are still looking for jobs. And uh, if you if you are able to get an interview, just uh, present yourself and and ha and get get the get the best uh, get the best out of it. So um, I don't have much to say other than to say thank you to the team that has been able to provide to provide for me this session to pro to present unto you. Uh, thank you, uh, Linda. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is very encouraging. Uh, just to also be seeing our cyber shuja alumni uh, making it out they are very encouraging and so i hope this is also encouraging to you um so as we close uh, two things um there's a form that was sent out to us um for purposes of us just uh, being able to plan better um um in terms of what what uh, topics you'd want us to to uh, include in future sessions. So kindly take time and fill that form for those of you who have not, for those of you who have, thank you very much. And uh, definitely hope and I uh, will will put all, all that into consideration and just work towards making these sessions better. Uh, the next thing is um, 
Um, I've been calling, I've been doing a lot of calls to, to those of us who do not have opportunities yet, and especially our also our current cohort. Um, kindly uh, get some time and go to our website, cybershuja.co.ke, and fill your, and, and up, upload your profile, um, and make sure that your profile is complete, uh, because we've already, we've, we've started posting our jobs on the Seba Shuja portal, and that will make it easier for you to just see the opportunities that are coming through, and so to also ease the application process for you. And we are here to support you in the event that you have interviews, you need to prepare, please feel free to reach out. Uh, so, I'm seeing a hand up, I think Kelvin, and then we can we can call it a, an evening. <laughs> 